For this week's SMTV News, there have been many celebratory events happening in Hattiesburg this month. We have one event coming up that we think you might be interested in. Plus, with Halloween just days away, the city of Hattiesburg held its first ever Trick or Treat on Main Street. Coming up on our show, we'll show you why some families chose Monday to knock trick or treating out the way. All of this and more coming right up. SMTV News for Thursday, October 31st starts now. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Hello USM, thank you for joining us and happy Halloween. I'm Kennedy Drake. That's right, we've got a spooktacular one for you today. I'm Beth L. Miles and let's hop right into our top news story. Southern Miss is officially hosting events to celebrate the legacy and the 100th birthday of William D. Campbell. Our very own reporter, Micaiah Jackson, has a lot more on what went down. I am currently standing outside of McCain Library today where I interviewed Jennifer Brannick about the 100th celebration of William D. Campbell. So uh, we have his manuscript papers here at the University and Special Collections. So in this we have his original writings, uh, copies of drafts of his book, photographs from his life, um, just a whole bunch of things that document his life and career. We wanted to really celebrate his life. Um, you know, he's a very important person that I think um, older generations know about. I think younger people just don't understand uh, kind of his involvement and what he did, not only in the movement, but in. Jennifer Brannick also touches on the legacy of William D. Campbell. So Will Campbell was a preacher, an activist, a, an author. Um, he was from, from Mississippi and uh, he was born 100 years ago this year, so that's why we're hosting all these events about him. For more information, go to usm.edu slash news slash 2024 slash release slash William dash Campbell dot P. This next story is the first of its kind. The city of Hattiesburg partnered with downtown Hattiesburg business to host Trick or Treat on Main Street. Beth Al Miles talked with some families about what made them come out to the spectacular event. Costumes and candy in the bag. For the first time, the city of Hattiesburg hosted Trick or Treat on Main Street. They got all the businesses are handing out candy, super fun, super cute for the kids. They got the dress up. Take pictures at the photo op over here. Super cute. Enchanting to a child's ear. Oh, oh, my or a princess's, I should say. That three word phrase brings out the community. This free family fun felt safe and well timed. Two things that parents look for in a world with too much going on. Um, I like how this is in the day, it's in the public and it's businesses. Like, I don't know if you've heard about like the different, um, Stuff that's been going on with them, like injecting, like fentanyl and stuff in the candy. This feels a little more safe. Naturally, Halloween is full of surprises. And something that's extremely frightening is being far away from home. Where are you from? Uh, London. Come from London. United Kingdom. They got a chance to see how we Halloween in America. How is Halloween in London? It's getting big. It's getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Not as big as here, but it's getting bigger. No matter how big or small you want to celebrate, Trick or Treat on Main Street provided a safe option for our candy-loving friends. I think in Hattiesburg, things just get bigger and bigger each year, and it was super fun, so if you miss out this year, come back next year. Getting beat up by Batman. <laughs> Here's a special one for you. USM celebrated its transfer students during Transfer Student Week. Suvi Lama has a lot more on the events that took place. Transfer Student Association, TSA, hosted the Fall Festival on Tuesday, October 22nd as a highlight of the Transfer Student Week celebration. So, since I am an online student, that's something I do kind of not have is like a community. That's why I'm here today, like with the TSA, because I want to be involved in school. So I think being a transfer student 
for me opened up a lot of doors because we have organizations like this where all you had to do was be a transfer student and that helped me find community where I didn't have one and it helps me be involved on campus so that's also great. Other events like faculty and staff spotlights, virtual game night, and transfer treats were celebrated all week. And I came from a junior college, went to a small small community college, and so it was just like I come to this big place and there's lots of opportunities to get involved, but it's just kind of hard to find your place at first. And I'm always like an introvert, so like it's hard for me to go up and take the initiative to be social and I'm not like a social butterfly that just runs around and just gets to be in all these things. And so TSA really helps with that, really helps me find my place. A new technological advancement is taking education by storm. I spoke with a few students and faculty at the University of Southern Mississippi about what they have to say about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is becoming a common tool in higher education. Students at the University of Southern Mississippi are using AI with many seeing it as a beneficial guide to their studies. But as reliance on AI grows, so do concerns about issues like plagiarism and dependency. It can be a source of good depending on how you're using it. Just don't fully 100% depend on AI to write stuff or to create stuff for you. A lot of institutions want to see students succeed within their own creativity, within their own uniqueness. So I feel like that's really huge and I really hold true to that. I want to show them my creativity and what I think about certain assignments and to see where my head is at and my mindset. Other public universities in the state, along with USM, are partners with the Mississippi Artificial Intelligence Network. That organization is allowing us to be on the front end of artificial intelligence as a state by providing resources to um, to the workforce. Most students say AI is a huge help to their academic journey, but it can easily be used as a clutch. Using learning tools like that is perfectly fine as long as you do kind of pull your own weight at least a little bit. Um, so I think it's kind of like if we could find a happy medium that would be great, but I feel like a lot of people kind of abuse it. Students say AI helps tackle challenges when it's used responsibly and integrity remains essential in academic growth. Kennedy Drake, SM2 News. Coming up in just a little bit, we still have flash news briefings, some sports and weather. Don't go anywhere, SMTV will be right back. If you're watching this with your friends, you'll probably make a joke. Because you know what you feel on the inside isn't what you want people to know. If you have to pretend to be happy, find someone you trust and tell them. If you get mad at things and you don't know why, or have thoughts about hurting yourself, find someone you trust and tell them. You are never alone when you share. Seriously, people care about you. It's okay to not understand what you're feeling. And it's easy to think that you're all alone. But you don't have to be. You're never alone when you share. Don't be ashamed to tell someone you trust what you're feeling. You're not alone. You are not alone. Find someone you trust and tell them. Tell a parent. Tell a teacher. Tell a brother or sister. Or just tell a friend. You haven't done anything wrong. Talk to someone. Talk to someone. It's how things get better. Deciding who to vote for is important. There are people, organizations, and foreign adversaries trying to trip us up, manipulate our views, and redirect or even discourage our vote. Whether it's bogus claims designed to stop us from voting or convincing digital fakes trying to sway our opinions, we all need to double check our facts. Watch out for phrases that frequently accompany political disinformation like make this go viral or conspiratorial statements like the media won't cover this. It's your vote, not theirs. Use it wisely. Be informed, not misled. Welcome back to SMTV. I'm Rachel Box, your SMTV weather reporter. Let's get right into it. For today's weather, the high is expected to be at 83 degrees and the low will be at 68. Now, it seems like those fall temperatures just didn't last for that long. So today is going to be a very rainy day with a rain chance of 59% and most of these showers will be happening in the morning and during the afternoon hours. Now let's move on to our weekly forecast. Friday's high will be the same at 83 degrees and the low will drop down to 63. On Saturday, the high will be 86 degrees and the low will carry on. I'm sorry about that. The high for Saturday will be at 86 degrees and the low will be 64 degrees. The high and low from Saturday will carry on over into Sunday. Now Monday's high will also be at 86, but this time, the low will be paired at 65 degrees. 
Now the entire week is going to be filled with clouds and rain because of our rain chances. Now let's look at our rain chances for the week. We can see that at the beginning of our, at the beginning of the week, we'll start out strong with a percent of 48 in rain chances. This means that Friday will have various showers throughout the day. Next on Saturday, the rain chances will drop to a small, I'm sorry, the rain chances will drop to a small 9%, but still the clouds will remain the same. Now Sunday, we see that the rain chances will begin to rise, giving us a rain chance of 23 degrees. The rain will be accompanied mostly by cloudy skies. And lastly, Monday will round us out with a rain chance of 11%. The rain chances for this week will vary from day to day. In order to stay on the, in order to stay on the safe side, I recommend bringing a raincoat when you head out. That's all I have for you for this week of SMTV Weather. Thank you for joining me, Rachel Brox, and I'll see y'all later. Peace out, Southern Miss. Thank you for the weather report, Rachel. And now it's time to get into some flash news. There have been 17 reports of pedestrians that got hit by vehicles in Hattiesburg so far this year. The Hattiesburg police say a teenager was just hit by a car crossing Hardy Street on Monday. With Halloween being today, Lieutenant Scotty Morris from the HPD's traffic division says he does not want to see the number go up anymore. Lieutenant Morris continued to tell us that drivers must be ready for the unexpected. The officer then said trick-or-treaters need to carry a flashlight or something that's reflective to make people aware that they're there on the streets. A federal court says Mississippi cannot count mail-in ballots that come in after Election Day. This decision will not change anything for the upcoming election as it's not put into place just yet. A court ruled that counting late ballots violates the federal law. Judges said the rule applies even if ballots are postmarked by Election Day. Judges usually avoid changing rules right before an election. Now into national news with the election being right on the cusp. Presidents are fighting tooth and nail to get those ballots out and get those votes. But unfortunately, there's been an incident in a couple different states where ballots have been burnt to the book. Investigators are saying that a single suspect is responsible for both incidents where the ballot boxes and a third now in Vancouver was burnt and had the phrase free Gaza written on them. Official investigators are gathering intel on whether the culprit is a pro-Palestinian or just someone trying to heighten tensions before election day. We still have SMTV sports and community calendar left in the show. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Get your trick or treating done and come back to the show. Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Happy birthday, dear dad. Happy birthday to you. What are you going to wish for, Grandpa? Don't just wish you had taken care of your hearing loss. Take action today. Visit ActNow on Hearing.com to learn the signs and find an ASHA certified audiologist near you. Hey y'all, what is going on? I am Rachel. I am the host of The Rachel Brock Show. Now you may be asking, what is The Rachel Brock Show? Well, it is a show that I'm hosting where we're just gonna laugh, talk about college, life, and so much more. So make sure you tell a friend, grab you something to drink, something to eat, and make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome back to SMTV. I'm Emily Blue and I'm here with this week's community calendar. Happy Halloween! This weekend at the Hartwig Theater on the USM campus, the Lieutenant of Inish Moore will be shown and tonight's showing is at 7.30 p.m. The play is about a man whose wrath is felt across the land when his cat goes missing. I can't spoil too much, but I can tell you that tickets for all showings can be purchased at Southern Miss Tickets 
www.evenue.net slash events slash S-Y-O-N. Tomorrow, Southern Miss Activities Council, otherwise known as SMAC, is hosting a movie night in the Joe Paul Student Theater at 7 p.m. Admission is free with a student ID. Also, November 1st is Downtown Brews and Bites from 6 to 8 p.m. The event is held downtown Hattiesburg at Walt Hall Park. Tickets can be purchased online. Brews and Bites tickets can only be purchased if you are 21 years of age. Bites tickets can be purchased by anyone. On November 2nd from 12 to 8 p.m. is the 8x8 Art Exhibit and Sale hosted by the MS Latinx Art Association. All showcased art can be purchased for $100 or less. There are multiple other art exhibitions featured on November 2nd in downtown Hattiesburg. Admission is free to all these exhibitions, and many featured pieces can be purchased. Remember to stay safe this Halloween. And that's it for your community calendar update with me, Emily Blue. See you next time, Southern Miss! It's time for our weekly trivia, brought to you by the production team at SMTV. Let's take it to the students of USM. Oh, Raising Cane's cookout is very disgusting. It's very overrated. I don't know why people go. Raising Ooh, Cane's. Raising Cane's. Uh, raising Cane's. Yeah, Raising Cane's, yeah, yeah. definitely. I'm gonna say cookout. Cookout. <laughs> cookout, it's cheaper. Dogs. Dogs, yeah. Dogs. 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 Dogs, all the way. Dogs. Cat Cats. Math. Math. English. Math sucks. Math. Uh, English. English. I like math, but I'm like really bad at it. So I'm, I'm going to go with math still. I'm going to go I'm gonna go with English because math is just like so much going on. That's a tough one. A hundred strangers. Loved ones. I guess save a hundred strangers. A hundred strangers. Mm. One loved one. One loved one. Yeah. <laughs> one loved one. One loved one. I'm gonna go with dinner with my favorite celebrity and hope he can cut me a check. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. Oh. Ten thousand dollars. No student loan debt. No student loan debt. No student loan debt. I'm gonna say graduate today. Graduate today. <laughs> no student loan debt. Yeah. No student loan debt. No student loan debt. No, no it should not belong nasty. on pizza. <laughs> it was disgusting. I think you could get away with pineapple on pizza for sure. I mean, why not? Try something different. It's a preference, but I think, yeah, it should be. Pineapple not on pizza. No. Yes. No. Please go to jail. <laughs> because it's delicious and it kind of adds to it, like a little spot. Actually, I've never tried it. What? <laughs> it just sounds weird. Good afternoon, Golden Eagles. I am your host, Steve Harvey, and we have an action-packed sports segment for you. I'm just playing, guys. It's Gabe, as per usual. And no, even though I look different, football still had the same issues with another loss in conference. The Eagles traveled to Harrisonburg, Virginia to take James Madison on in a conference game. The Eagles, with a new coach, still had the same result, dropping another game in conference to JMU, 15-32. The Golden Eagles did not go down quietly though as Connor Gibbs nailed three kicks and Kenyon Clay found the end zone for another Saturday. The Eagles have a rest week and have a chance to recuperate as they're looking forward to hosting Marshall next week at The Rock. Now over to the pitch. The Lady Golden Eagles had a pair of games this weekend. Thursday, a 4-1 win against the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana. And we learned a new term this weekend with soccer, braces, which is two goals, which two of our Lady Eagles had, Shaylin Quick, and Rebecca Vega both found the net. And Sunday, we had another brace with Taylor Stewart finding the net twice. And that was a two to two draw against Georgia Southern. Now the Lady Eagles have their last home game tonight against ULM, and this is their last chance to make an opportunity to get in the conference. 
The game will be streamed on ESPN Plus for those who cannot attend. On to volleyball, the Lady Golden Eagles had a conference game themselves. Sorry, conference series, excuse me, as they took on the Old Dominion Monarchs. The Lady split the series with the Monarchs, getting swept on Friday three sets to none and bouncing back Saturday with an impressive three to one win. In the, in the win this past weekend, Francesca Pannunzio recorded her 1,000th career assist in the Golden Eagles. Found a way to get it done. Way to go, Francesca. Passing it over to basketball, our men's team took on Jackson State Monday night in the Reed Green Four charity event that benefited Extra Table. The Eagles started out very shaky as it was a home opener and they trailed at the half but came in the second half with force and even took the game into overtime where Andre Corbello took the lead or took the game over for the Eagles and got them the win 92 to 85. Our player of the week this week has has won it once but now has her brace as the player of the week goes none other to my friend Rebecca Vega as she was named SBC Offensive Player of the Week with a stat line that included four goals in her last five games. Way to go Rebecca. This has been your SNTV Sports Report. Steve Harvey's gone but Gabe, Gabe's still here and I'll see you next time. Go go Nevis. Here's this week's episode of Eagle Interview. Hosted by Kayla Moran. Welcome to Eagle Interview. My name is Kaylin Moran and I'll be your host. Today we have two very special guests in the studio with us. He's the 2024 Mr. Southern Miss, Carl White IV, and she's the 2024 Miss Southern Miss, Destiny Keys. Mm -hmm. Destiny, Carl, thank you both so much for joining me in the studio today. Thank you for having us. We're Absolutely. so excited yes, to be yes. here. Now, my first question, Carl, how has earning the title of Mr. Southern Miss been for you? Like, what does it mean to have that role? Um, I'd say the biggest thing about having this role is um, it's sort of just a pinnacle of like all the work that I put in on campus uh, during my four years here. Um, just sort of seeing like all the work that I put in as far as like organizations and just community service sort of be recognized. You know, you really don't do it for the recognition. You just do it, you know, just to sort of, you know, make an impact on the community. But just being recognized for that is really big. Right. And what kind of organizations and um, any clubs and such are you or, uh, involved with on campus? Um, I'm a Spring 24 initiate of the prestigious Musi chapter of Alpha Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Um, I'm in the Men of Excellence, uh, African American Student Organization, Student Government Association. Um, I'm in Eagle. I'm in Campus Outreach. I'm in Eaglethon. I'm a practice player for the <laughs> women's basketball team. Um, it's a couple more here and there. It's a lot of them. Very, very well cultured around the campus, <laughs> yeah. I can tell. That's really incredible. Destiny, how about you? You know, um, I'm involved in a lot of things. Sometimes I lose checks, so please forgive me. But I'm a Fall 23 initiate of the illustrious IOTA Kappa chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I serve as the president of the Residence Hall Association. I'm the founder and president of the pre -POTS which is the Pre-Physical and Occupational Therapy Society here. Um, oh, I'm the Vice President of the Student Health Coalition. For the past two years, I've ser served as a learning assistant for general chemistry classes. And outside of that, I was a Canard Scholar and I'm also a TRIO Scholar. Oh my gosh, y'all are both so impressive. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Destiny, how about you? How does being Miss Southern Miss for this year, how is it like? How does it feel? Oh my goodness, it means the world to me. Just because I know how much I put into this university, I really always strive to put my best foot forward, and I didn't do it to be recognized, but just seeing how much other people recognize what I'm doing as well, it means the world. Because during campaigning week, how many people supported me and was there for me, and just seeing that the student body chose me to serve as Emory Southern Miss, it's very heartwarming, and I really enjoy it. So. That is really, really nice to see. So how do you, you like plan on using this platform as Miss Southern Miss or Mr. Southern Miss? How do you plan mm -hmm. on using this to perhaps, you know, get more attention to your organizations or to just, you know, 
gain more awareness on the campus itself? You know, honestly, I just plan to con continue doing what I've been doing. I'm just now reaching a larger audience with that. But I always tell people the opportunities are endless at Southern Miss. So whatever you want to do and whatever you put your mind towards doing, you're available to do it, you know? Okay. So I just want to keep spreading that message to folks and just on a larger scale, so. Yes, yes, love to hear it. Carl, what about you? Um, just sort of building on that, um, especially bringing awareness to like the organizations that sort of helped me get to this point. I always rep uh, Mox and my fraternity everywhere I go. Um, but just, you know, encouraging other students, you know, especially those who have just come to know me since I've gotten this role, um, to just not be scared of, you know, taking that chance of becoming the person you want to be. Because, like, college is, like, the perfect time to reinvent yourself and really find who you are as a person. And so not being scared to, you know, take those opportunities and reach out to those certain groups or people, you know, just do what you want to do, you know, just sort of having that intent of what you want to be in life. And, you know, I'm so glad that y'all were both so well involved and, like, could really enjoy this because, you know, mm -hmm. I can obviously, you both are very, very well, um, you know, involved and, like, active on campus. So y'all definitely deserve these titles. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Thank of course. You. Thank you both so much for sitting down with me and congratulations again. Thank it's an incredible you. honor. And thank you so much, Golden Eagles, for tuning in to Eagle Interview. My name is Kaylin Moran, and we'll see you next week. See you. Now on to our next box office hit. Welcome to SM2 Cinema. The thriller we chose to highlight for this week's episode is called Don't Move. Don't Move was released last Friday on October the 25th with the plot of the film centered around a woman named Iris who is grieving from the loss of her child. She comes into contact with a man named Richard, who eventually turns violent. In her, on her, and through attempts to escape him, she rediscovers her will to live, despite her recent loss. The movie stars Kelsey Alsba Alsby as Iris and Finn Whitrock as Richard. Adam Schneider and Brian Netto were the directors for the newly released film. You still have the opportunity to go see it in theaters or stream it on Netflix. Since 2024, it's nearly the end. Let's take a look at a movie planned to release in 2025. A sequel to the 2023 Five Nights at Freddy movie is currently in the works. The film is being directed by Emma Tammy. The script was written by Scott Cawthon, the creator of the Five Nights at Freddy franchise, and Seth Cuddleback, along with the director. The cast of the first movie are still expected to make appearances as the characters they played previously, with Josh Hutcherson as Mike Schmidt, Elizabeth Lale as Vanessa, Piper Rubo as Abby, and Matthew Lillard as William Ofton. There are no specific release dates as of right now, but you can still be on the lookout for updates on the film. And that's a wrap for us here on SMTV Cinema. Until our next screening. Kennedy, it's the spooky season, so what, what Halloween movies are you remembering? I know you like a little scary movie or a little something. What are you into horror-wise? Mm, I love, what's it called? Fear Street, 1978. It's awesome. It features Sadie Sink from Stranger Things, and it's about kids getting murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, listen, that's something that I love so much about this spooky season. You could be walking around downtown and see a little Chucky, but he don't even understand, like, what candy to get out the box. Right. Listen, y'all, thank you guys so much for sticking around with us through our haunted studio this time around. Uh, we'll be catching up with you just a little bit later. Thank you so much for watching SMTV. Make sure to visit our social media pages, like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Southern Miss Student Media. If you would like to submit a news tip, email us at sm2news at usm.edu. Also, if you would like to advertise with SM2 Media, please reach out to Jason Beverly at jason.beverly at usm. You can find all these stories and more on our website, 
sm2.com. That's it for us on this Halloween day. Golden Eagles, always remember, Southern Miss to the, to the top. top.